Call of Duty COD on the moon. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard that right. Now, recently, I've been on kind of a personal, you know, wave of personal rabbit hole of just discovering games that have never actually came out. One of which is probably the coolest fucking Call of Duty game that I've ever seen with my own two eyes. Now look, this recent-ish wave of Call of Duty games, I kinda like them, I kinda like them. They feel smooth, the customization is dope. It's just that my heart has always yearned, not just for gooning, but for a futuristic Call of Duty that just kicks ass. Now I'ma open this up by asking, if you remember the beginning of Ghosts, when you're shooting people on the International Space Station. You know, that shit is like the fucking Space Force fighting the Anunnaki. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you like the beginning of Call of Duty Ghosts, if you like space shit, now picture a Call of Duty game based around just that. What we are talking about today is a game called Call of Duty NX1. A game developed by the former studio Neversoft that was planned for a 2013 release date for the Xbox One and PS4. Now what's really funny about this shit is that Neversoft's previous project before this was none other than Guitar Hero. My ass cannot think of a game more different than Call of Duty you know, then Guitar Hero. But you know, following the exit of the two co-founders of Infinity Ward, Jason West and Vincent Pella, never saw for like, you know, fuck this, let's just go, I don't know, attempt to make the most fucking cool Call of Duty game that humanity has ever seen. Call of Duty NX1 was leaked on Twitter by showcasing the character you play as waking up on the fucking moon. Well, you know, not really wake up, but instead lie half dead, half alive, because of the fact that you were caught in open fire by some other spaceman, or Anunnaki, or whatever the fuck. Your visor's cracked, your oxygen tank meter beeping thing is being annoying as shit, the dude leading you to the moon base is being annoying as shit. Go down. Go down. Motherfucker, I am going back inside. It's fucking clear as day, though, that I just got mag dumped by some fucking alien spacemen. But then, you know, the more you watch the cinematic, the more you're like, oh, fuck that dude anyways, because he just gets domed. The person to your left also gets domed. Everyone except for you just gets fucking wombo comboed, and it's a miracle that you actually end up making it back to the base camp. But, you know, just as you believe that you are safe, the windows get blown out as everyone gets flown into the cosmos, and the scientists base people are just finished one at a time as it becomes evident that you are hashtag fucked. You see people, this is what a campaign for a FPS should be like. Maybe not all FPSs, but certainly a Call of Duty game. High stakes, vulnerability, a sense of, oh shit, I'm in the middle of a fucking war and maybe I should just pick up this gun and fend for my life. The weapons look powerful, the levels look mysterious, this is a game that took pride in its identity and most importantly, with the Spaceman Soldier interface, it prioritized being immersive. Now, of course, when you watch the build, especially the 10 minute video that's also on Twitter, you realize that the animations, especially the reloading animations, as well as the sound for each gun is reused from Modern Warfare 2. This is because, obviously, Call of Duty NX1 was very incomplete. Now, with regards to the leaked space mission, former multiplayer lead for the game, Brian Bright, stated that, quote, this mission was on the moon. Some experiments with low G and was really about the team learning the engine. Now what's extremely cool about this game was how ahead of the curve it low-key was. In the additional leaked gameplay, you know, the player is shown to use a stim shot in 2013, way before Black Ops 4. Altered gravity movement is also demonstrated with the player's hearing being muffled as to quote the Alien franchise in space no one can hear you scream. This game really set the foundation, not just for the Call of Duty Ghost mission, but also for a lot of Infinite Warfare. Within the bare bones multiplayer mode, the game featured an escort game mode that bears a lot of similarities to the one that Overwatch uses. It really is like the game was developed by a time traveler who went to 2018, took a couple notes on the games of that year, and then time traveled back. You know, he probably saw all the microtransactions and bullshit from that year and was like, oh, I'm getting the fuck out of here, and I really don't blame him. The game also had a map called Bin Laden's Compound, which, if accurate, probably features a fuck ton of anime merchandise scattered everywhere because apparently Osama Bin Laden was a weeaboo. Nothing against that, I fuck with anime as well. 
I just really wanted to give a fun fact about Osama Bin Laden. It's just ultimately a shame. This was going to be the game to originally be released instead of Call of Duty Ghosts, a game that was hella shit on from day one. NX1 looked like a cool game, but most importantly, it looked like a great first impression for COD fans when seeing futuristic warfare in Call of Duty. While the setting was drastically different from shit like Terminal or maps like Rust, it still looked like a Call of Duty game based on its movement, which if leading into a much more evolved game like Advanced Warfare would be a good first game for fans to play to get a nice bite of the sandwich that is futuristic Call of Duty. Instead, you know, in our timeline, Call of Duty Ghosts release and leaves a huge sour fucking taste into a lot of people's mouths. I mean, I, there's a lot of things I don't like about that game. The game had a cliffhanger. The maps were super huge for some reason. Like, like in incredibly huge. Oh, shit. And I, I could just go on and on about that game. But in our timeline, it all led for Infinite Warfare to be the most disliked video game trailer at that time. Because people were really burnt out of Call of Duty and really burnt out from futuristic Call of Duty. The game, in my opinion, actually had a really good single player, and you know, unlike modern Call of Duty that we see now, it took risks. It took a risk being the game that it was. And the funny thing is, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is probably the closest thing we'll ever have to Call of Duty NX1.